Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome to the second weekend of uh, Spot on Economies. Uh, one week ago, we opened the research forum uh, by inviting some uh, theoretical positions uh, from different fields who work by uh, setting aside uh, established concepts that are uh, the base of economy, and in doing so, they make room for alternative logics. And uh, in particular, uh, the program investigated uh, the possibility that uh, emerge if one or many people uh, break away from the logic of scarcity and engage uh, in militant abundance. Also, uh, it explored the chances of uh, an activist academia, uh, the chances that an activist academia has to transform the economies. Uh, in this uh, second weekend, uh, we continue this uh, work of uh, unlearning and uh, unbuilding that uh, we have started. Uh, and this work that really regards uh, um, unbuilding uh, that set of rules that we uh, know as the economy. And uh, we do this with a shift. Uh, or two shifts. Uh, the first shift is that we move to the arts. And uh, the second is that uh, uh, what we uh, have today is a, is a position really rooted in uh, a practice. Um, it's uh, a pleasure for me to introduce to you uh, the Common Wallet uh, here in the people of uh, Ingrid, Tiziana and Adva. Um, Ingrid uh, is uh, um, an independent works as uh, an independent dramaturg, curator, and artist, and is a member of FOAM. Um, the collaborative project Common Wallet has shaped her daily life since 2018, uh, and since the spring of 2020, she is part of the multi-voiced curatorial team of VP Zimmer, a space for artistic development in Antwerp. 
uh, Tiziana, uh, lives and works in Brussels. She studied photography in Brussels. And uh, since uh, 2009, she works as a production manager in the performing arts. And she joined the Common Wallet in 2019. And uh, Adva uh, was uh, born in Israel and lives in Brussels, um, combining her background in dance and performance with the creation of uh, particip participative educational and life practices. She is a part uh, of collectives such as Common Wallet, School of Love and Co-Post. She is teaching, studying and trying to never work alone and never work too much. Uh, the Common Wallet is uh, an initiative of uh, 11 uh, Brussels-based people uh, who, since uh, January 2018, uh, live out of a common bank account. Uh, they wire all uh, their individual income into a shared account, and uh, each uses uh, the money according to their needs, their wishes, and their desires, no matter if uh, it corresponds with the income they contributed or not. Uh, the title of... Uh, the Common Wallet's contribution today is uh, practicing trust through money. And with this, uh, I give you the word, the floor. Ah, yes. Um, so uh, we are a part of the Common Wallet, and uh, we're definitely not the whole Common Wallet. So what we will try to do with you tonight is give you three perspectives on what Common Wallet is, and sometimes these perspectives will diverge, and we will be terribly incomplete without our eight other uh, parts uh, and their uh, input. So take everything we say with a grain of salt, <laughs> or uh, with some doubt. Um, and also, uh, before we go on, um, we because there are so many ways of talking about the common wallet, we feel it's most appropriate to fill this uh, time we have together through your questions, uh, to make this talk as uh, um, meaningful to you as possible. So that is how we propose to form this evening. So at no point hesitate to ask questions, and this is the input and the content that we will create together with you tonight. Um, but before that, I will try to give a more concise introduction of what Common Wallet is. Um, so as been said, uh, we're 11 people. We, most of us live in Brussels, but some of us live elsewhere some of the time. Most of us work in the arts, but not all of us. Um, most of us are freelancers, but some of us have a fixed job. Um, some of us have kids, some of us don't. Some of us have pets. Some of us don't. Some of us have family in Brussels, and some of us don't. So we are 11 very different uh, constellations on our own, and together we make one common wallet. Um, we have one bank account, um, which is named Common Wallet, and every month we put all of our income on this account. So all of the income, it means our fees, our salaries, income through author's rights, if we're renting a space, this money is coming into the common wallet. If we're receiving any kind of social benefits from the state, this is coming onto the common wallet. Um, money for childcare is coming onto the common wallet. So all kinds of income uh, are put into our common account. And all kinds of expenses are made from this account. So paying the mortgages for our houses or apartments are paid from the common wallet, rent, food, clothes, uh, hobbies for kids, hobbies for ourselves, any kind of useless stuff we want to buy, um, any kind of desires we have, restaurants, bars, phones, all of this is paid from Common Wallet. Um, and when we started uh, now a good three years ago, right? Yes, three years. <laughs> Um, we decided to not make any rules. I think this is a very important thing to say. We, uh, yeah, soon four years. Yeah, we decided, okay, we won't put any rules. So we never said you can spend money on this, you cannot spend money on this. The principle is you take what you need, 
you give what you have uh, or what comes in. And we trust that all of us want to take care of the collective in the best way possible. And we don't judge. We don't judge what the need is for the other person. So if my need is to buy a new sports watch, which is something that I am seriously considering at this moment, I'm embarrassed to admit, then uh, I am uh, making my process <laughs> of this investment, but I can trust that when I come to the decision that this is a correct investment for me, or a, a correct expenditure for me, the common wallet will support it, because they will also trust my judgment, and I will trust the judgment of other members in return. So there are no rules. And in those almost four years, we have not really made any rules of that kind, I think. No, no. Um, what else? Um, ah, yes. Uh, we, we use the common wallet for all our normal expenses, but we can also still have individual savings. This is important to know because it's a question that often comes up. So if it is your habit to save some money every month, you can still take the money from the common wallet and put it on your individual savings. If you're saving up for a new sport wash, for example. Um, and the idea is that the common wallet is not there to to change our lifestyles necessarily towards a very specific goal, but to make life possible the way we find most generative and generous for all of us um, through this practice. So, so yeah, we're working on this together with many ups and downs, uh, with some red numbers, with some festive numbers. <laughs> and whenever there is issues, we have uh, 10 other brains to solve the issues. And for this, we also have some practical tools to make this work, um, which is uh, the most important one, I think, is our weekly breakfast. So we meet each other every week for breakfast. Um, and I think this is very important in order to create this trust because we need to put at the core of what we're doing, knowing where everyone is in their life. That actually makes it possible to judge how I then position myself in terms of expenses or income towards the common wallet, because I know where everyone is and it's based on a personal uh, conversation. Uh, we have an Excel sheet, not to track what everyone is spending. We don't look at what people are spending and we don't track expenses on an individual level at all, but we use it to um, monitor cash flow, which because that is as freelancers, maybe one of the biggest challenges that we face. Um, so we use it to monitor when are we expecting money to come in and when are we expecting big expenses to go out, but more on a collective level than on an individual level. And we have a Telegram chat for um, quick interactions uh, to ask, help, the card set, there is not enough money on the account and I'm in the supermarket. <laughs> this is being shared on the Telegram chat. But also, who can feed my cat this weekend? Just as well shared on the Telegram chat. Or who knows? what the best but cheapest hairdresser in town is at this moment. Also something very uh, good for the Telegram chat. Um, and these are our... Uh, and the secretary, yes. I would forget, every month we have a rotating role of the secretary. And the secretary's role is to make sure everyone fills in this uh, spreadsheet, which is a very difficult task to manage. And uh, the secretary also keeps an eye on the status of the bank account so that when they see, oh, there is a bottleneck coming or we only have a thousand euros on the account, but a thousand five hundred in expenses predicted for next week, they can kind of anticipate um, these kind of things and communicate them to the group. So we don't always have to all keep an eye on this. It's one person shop every month and they make sure that we actually meet. Uh, so they also keep a bit track of, are we still engaged for our weekly breakfast and so on. Um, and I think these are the points. 
as a first general introduction of what Common Wallet is. Um, do you want to add something? I would also like to ask if it's possible to put some light on the public so that it feels a bit more like, because uh, I can't see you. Um, so just that we feel a bit in the same room. Thank you. Um, yeah, two things to add to what Ingrid said that maybe it's kind of essential to, um, to know at the start of the discussion. Um, we don't see the common wallet as a, a kind of um, economical model, but we see it more as a research into our relationship with money and um, some kind of a tool in order to help us uh, reflect, subvert, think differently about um, the background that we come from, which kind of determined our relationship with money and the way we uh, deal and confront with situations that are some, somehow manifesting themselves differently through commoning uh, the financial situation. So the common wallet is mainly a research into that, into the psychological, emotional, um, social implications of our personal lives and the uh, weekly breakfast that Ingrid just mentioned are actually made in the intention of coming together in order to share exactly that. So not so much to think how we can somehow create a better mechanism for the common wallet, but uh, to really understand where we are, where each of us is, and what kind of confrontations came to the surface in order to somehow put them as material on the table. Um, to make them into some kind of a shared um, problem or issue. Um, so it's some kind of a research into um, the loneliness that can be generated through um, the way, the normative way um, we uh, use in order to deal with money and how to make it into something that is actually more shared and less lonely. And the other thing which is a bit related is that indeed we have no rules. Um, we are not against rules, but we just decided to start without any rules and see if the need arrives or arises in order to create rules. So far, no rules have been made, but there are definitely commitments. And it's kind of impossible to join the common wallet um, without committing to transparency but this transparency is not about what you spend your money on, but about what it makes you feel to be in the common wallet. So this transparency is um, really needed in order to oil um, this mechanism that we built for ourselves, which is the biggest challenge because even though we're all committed to it, um, we discover time and again that this transparency is really not easy um, because uh, we have to deal with our own judgment and our own fear of judgment. And all of this um, is somehow something that can be probably very <clears throat> anxiety inducing and very private and, and the commitment is to actually make it into a shared thing. It doesn't always work, but that's the attempt. Uh, as uh, uh, Ingrid, Tizian and Adva mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is uh, a conversation more than a lecture, so we are actually ready to open uh, the floor to questions. Uh, there is a question there. Yeah, hello. Um, maybe just some kind of uh, short ice ice breaking question. Um, do you check um, the bank account if you're not the secretary? The three of you. Um, yes, we do, mm -hmm. uh, but it's more uh, to check if I go to the supermarket that I don't <laughs> have bad surprises that my card is refused, but uh, surely not to check um, the details. Now, 
um, I would add that, that so I, I joined the, the project later. The project already exists since a year and a half when I joined. And uh, of course, it was very exciting to discover. Uh, but also, I was checking the, what was spent as a diary. So really, as um, getting to know the life of each other, what was their uh, consumerism habits or whatever. But it's more the, um, to meet the people you share a project with and not control. Yeah, during the Common Wallet, I lived in Amsterdam for two years. And um, I would sometimes check the account just to see where people were going. <laughs> to be like, oh, they went to this bar. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> I miss this bookshop. <laughs> so it was like, yes, I would look at it, but more as a, yeah, as a more emotive way than about the money. <laughs> I have a question related um, to this. Um, I was wondering whether uh, there is a, a sort of uh, emancipatory aspect um, in the fact that you cannot actually really control uh, the money because uh, uh, I'm thinking uh, I am alone in, with my bank account uh, and of course I, I have the option to control you are in a very different position. Your controller is very limited uh, on how the money enters and exit. And I wonder if this uh, paradoxically doesn't bring you to a position in which uh, you have a free uh, a relationship with money that is more free, or uh, if you can um, emancipate yourself from this sort of uh, controlling because you cannot control it. Uh, the answer is uh, yes, <laughs> from my uh, perspective. When we started the Common Wallet, we said um, that uh, if uh, being in the Common Wallet reduces the quality of life for any of us, for one reason or another, um, it means that, uh, that it doesn't work. So the, the aim of this uh, project is uh, only to generate... Um, happiness <laughs> or to generate well-being and uh, of course in the beginning um, what we meant by it was if any of us feel limited um, in uh, not being able to consume what uh, they would normally uh, like to consume then it means that um, yeah that, that, that we are actually limiting ourselves uh, instead of emancipating ourselves but indeed, that happened because, as you said, we don't have control over the account. So if I want you know, to buy something, even just food, um, for my empty fridge, and I realize that there is not enough money in the account from, for, um, for that, um, somehow um, I think many of us realize that uh, I there is a, a very emancipating element in the fact that then you question yourself, do I actually really need it? And uh, is this a real desire of mine? Is this a real need of mine? Or can I actually find another solution such as, and this is a very cliche example, but if my fridge is empty and there is not enough money on the account to uh, go to the shop, maybe I can propose to have a collective dinner with everybody, which for sure, uh, then, you know, it costs less. I can uh, use the food that is in the fridges of other people. And I can also somehow enhance my... Um, uh, social relationship with the people because we have a collective moment. So this is, it's a cliche example, but that actually, it does happen. But the main thing is that um, it, it invites, um, it's an invitation to slow down and to reflect on what is it that we really need. Um, so the fact that uh, we all, or maybe not all, but many admitted that they did have to limit and reduce their consumption habits, this actually contributed to an enhancement in life quality because it brought more reflection and, and it contributed to a change of habits, which is always, always brings to a feeling of growth somehow. So, yeah, I'm trying not to speak in the name of everybody, but uh, for me, for sure, it added some kind of a, a spiritual uh, element to it of questioning my own desires and my own needs. Yeah, and maybe to add something to that is that when 
when I was alone with my money and I wouldn't have enough for whatever I thought I needed, it would feel very frustrating. Like my work isn't valued because I'm earning so little and na 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 na. And now it's more like, ah, uh, my choices make things possible for others. And that feels so much better than I'm not able to generate whatever desire of the moment I have. We have two questions from the audience. Oh. Adding uh, that it's also an engagement with the not knowing. Uh, and so we kind of all prepared to this uh, unexpected situation of the account, uh, but it's part of the, it's part of it. Please. Thank you so much for sharing. I have, I think, several questions. How did you, like, who are you? What is the background of the different people in the group? Because I was wondering, when you started the project, what happened to people who already had a lot of money? And what happened to people who didn't have any money at all? And how did you negotiate that? And also, who's in the common wallet? Is it just women? Is it mixed? Uh, and how do, do you negotiate the differences that brings about in terms of a relationship to money? Um, you wanted to know, I think, also how did you come together as a group? It's kind of a related question, I think. And I had something else that I forgot, but <laughs> I'll just pass on the mic. <laughs> oh, well, maybe... <laughs> Too late. We can start answering this, maybe. <laughs> Is this on? No. Um, my question is related, actually, uh, to yours. Um, but yeah, thank you for your insights. I was wondering how you deal with uh, financial heritage, so that also touches on uh, the backgrounds, or if there are any, pra if there are practices that you propose, or if you have any agreements on heritage, like Erbe, it would be in German. Yeah. My separate questions, so I have separate questions, so maybe someone else. Yeah. Uh, oh, a lot to say. Um, so how how the group started? Um, yeah, we are actually um, somehow all um, closely related to each other, if not through friendships, then through col professional collaborations, and often as many of you probably know these things come together. Um, deep friendships are generated through intensive uh, uh, processes, uh, work processes together. So it started as, a, as some kind of a discussion between um, us in different combinations. Um, there was one of us who somehow came up with the idea, let's just put all the money together and see how it goes. Um, and then, yeah, from 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 here to there, we somehow realized, okay, we are all sharing somehow a similar discussion, which made us already into a group. Um, shall I continue about the questions of um, back different backgrounds or? Yeah, maybe just to add that um, we were, I think, all busy with similar topics around economy, around production, around collaboration. But for example, I, there were people I had never seen before until the day that we went to the bank to sign the bank account. So some of us knew each other, but not everyone. So it's not like we were a group of friends and we all came up with it a bar night. It was uh, different constellations finding each other. But to add to that, <laughs> because uh, yeah, I experienced whenever we talk about the common wallet, um, there is really there, there are only good things to say, <laughs> and uh, if there is uh, one point that is um, somehow still a challenge, is the fact that even though we come from different backgrounds, we are quite a homogeneous group uh, in the way we think. We still challenge each other, and uh, we go. Yeah, we 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 manage to somehow um, be influenced by the different ways of thinking of everybody. But the openness um, 
to discuss, to share, to, to expose, um, and the belief in the importance of it is really, I think, was already rooted in, uh, in everybody's practice, in everybody's mentality. Um, and um, on that level, um, this project has never been challenged um, uh, with diversity. Um, so it, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's a strong, uh, if it's a strength or a, a disadvantage. It's a fact. That's what it is, and for sure, it contributes a lot to the fact that it works so well. Uh, we are quite, uh, yeah, like-minded people. Okay. Yeah, and then financially speaking, in terms of net income per month, there is difference, but it's also not huge. I would say the individual net income per month fluctuates in between 1,000 and 2,500 euros a month, more or less. So it's not that we're having people who have no income at all. This happens on some months that someone has no income at all, but at this moment, it's not the case that there is someone who structurally has no income at all and someone who brings in 4,000 euros net. It's not that wide. We had different. it. We have it. We had it. We had it. We had yes, it. it's true. Yeah. It was the case at a certain moment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was an interesting case uh, because, uh, yeah, there was, there was someone who, um, yeah, who, not only um, I, I didn't earn um, sufficient enough, a sufficient um, amount of money in order to really uh, be able to live from it, but was also against um, earning money. Um, and uh, and there, and now I'm deviating a bit from the questions, but we'll get back to it. But it's just the right moment maybe to mention it. Then there was a very big um, discussion that I think shaped a lot the common wallet. Uh, what should we consider as a contribution to the common wallet? If it's not financial contribution, then what is it? And and we went through all the different uh, variations that uh, that that can take place. Uh, like maybe if you don't bring money into the common wallet, you could. Um, babysit the kids of those who have to go to work because uh, um, because they would bring money to the common wallet. Maybe you can contribute to the well-being of the common wallet by um, preparing the breakfast every time when we meet. Uh, so there can be other contributions that are not um, monetary contributions. And then we realized that by if if we implement this kind of system, we're actually reproducing the same capitalist um, system where um, somehow those who don't earn money end up serving those who earn money. Um, and, uh, and that's exactly what the project wants to go against. So if we would implement this, we would create people who are actually slaved to the, or enslaved to the project. Um, and we ended up with concluding that a contribution to the project is by the fact that you exist, <laughs> by the fact that you are. You are in the project, and that's already an incredible contribution, and that's enough. So there should not be any contribution that we can somehow put against the, the, the financial contribution. This doesn't exist. I hope I said it clearly enough. It's, it's, uh, we call it the non-reciprocity um, principle that I think by this it differs from other alternative financial systems that work on principles of reci reciprocity and common wallet really doesn't. Yeah, and then uh, uh, to come back to the homogeneity of the group, we're not all women, just tonight we are, but um, uh, they're also men. Um, and um, yeah, heritage, I think, is an uh, interesting, uh, very interesting topic because it is one of the things we have not yet completely cracked. Because, of course, we all come to the table with very different lived experiences and with very different financial backpacks. 
uh, some of them are really full, some of them are really empty, some of them are question marks. Um, and, and this is, um, yeah, an interesting part that is still in flux because uh, we were discussing this on the train over here, actually, and Advai, you said it really well, uh, that the goal of the common wallet is not to um, redistribute, to force redistribution of uh, all of the inheritances that we might have and all of the property that some of us have and some of, a, of, of us don't. So this is not the goal, but it's more... Um, how, how did you say it? How do we inject solidarity into that? Yeah, yes. in, into those asymmetries. So yeah, we don't try to flatten the asymmetries, but we try to um, still live within them through implementing uh, solidarity, which means practically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? true? Yeah, practically, what, do you, what are these privileges, right? How can we map them? And some of those privileges are indeed, some of us have a filled savings account. And at some moments, the savings account is used when we notice we have a cash flow issue. So people can put in from their savings. But another privilege might also be having access to uh, unemployment uh, benefits. In Belgium, there is a very specific system of unemployment benefits for artists, but it is not accessible to all. So already having access to this is a huge uh, privilege that we share within Common Wallet and that makes it possible for others to, to also feel the security that it brings, even though it is not in their name, even though they don't directly have access to this kind of security. Um, and then there is a big question. So we also don't try to gloss over and ignore that we have these differences between us. They're often put on the table and they're mostly put on the table as also an, em an emotional factor that each of us is working through individually and the process of that we are sharing with each other. Because what Common Wallet is doing is it is really questioning and challenging our personal beliefs and anxieties and relationship with money and, and shifting that through this sharing process or this commoning process. So also our relationship with our financial heritage is shifting through Common Wallet because we are also thinking our future no longer in an individual way, but we're trying to think it also as a group. Um, Sorry, I, um, just to, um, to make um, this kind of mechanism of how um, the transition from the personal saving accounts to the common wallet is happening. <clears throat> so unfortunately, we are approaching the zero a few times a month. <laughs> And when this happens, um, some of us who have private saving accounts uh, would um, transfer money into the common wallet in order to save temporarily the situation. But then it means that the common wallet is in debt towards this private account of the person. So at a certain point, this money has to circulate back into the private account of this, of, of this person. So it means that, again, we don't try to erase the or to flatten the asymmetries by saying, oh, you have savings, so you put some in order to help the common wallet. We acknowledge the fact that it has to go back into this uh, saving account, but we also benefit from it, which, of course, on the psychological level, many of us also have to somehow surrender to the fact that some people have more than others and that we somehow acknowledge the power that this gives because some of us give more <laughs> or have the power to somehow say, ah, oh, no problem, I, I give from my saving account and, uh, and, and, and we will owe it back to me. Um, so yeah, in this process, there is also a lot of, uh, from all sides, from the side of the giver, from the side of, of the receivers. Um, but um, we actually, in the last breakfast, uh, which happened on Friday, um, we had quite a heated uh, debate um, about the fact that, uh, yeah, some, some people think that uh, the fact that we are doing this, this transition or 
transmission between private accounts to the common account, that we are actually functioning like an, an enterprise, that we are just kind of channeling money in order to save the, the project, but we are actually, many of you are doing like this. <laughs> um, but uh, actually my, my position at the moment towards it, uh, it can still change through this uh, discussion that we are having, is that that's uh, also the beauty of the project, because yes, we come from different backgrounds and um, it's not necessarily in our control. What we can do with it is to act um, through principles of solidarity upon it. Um, so it's actually, we are, by this creating quite a beautiful system of, um, um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. Um, Yeah, of allowing those who somehow have a more um, puffed up cushions um, to um, to kind of bring bring life into the common wallet when the common wallet is suffocating. And actually, what's wrong with that? That's a question. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, okay. Hi, thank you. Um, I have three very brief questions. Hopefully, they can be answered as in quite briefly. One is, is, I think it sounds like it could be quite a emancipatory and, um, as you say, positive for well-being kind of project. I wonder if you could say a bit more about some of the ways in which it's changed people's lives for the better, like the positive change, other than just the um, not having control type thing, but what kind of, what's changed about people's lives for, in, a, in a good way. The second question is quite technical. It sounds like sometimes, you said quite regularly, the bank account goes to zero. And I think for 11 people, that sounds quite stressful. As I'm, I'm, is, is it the case that there are other... <laughs> is there, is there, uh, do people have other incomes, genuinely? Or is it just the savings system? Or it, it just feels like if I wasn't sure that my bank account, if I was encountered in the supermarket and I, I went to the red, I, I'd be like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Um, so, so the quite technical question about how is that maintained? Is there like a baseline that needs it, that that you want to keep at a certain level of income that's always going to be in there, or, or how is that dealt with amongst eleven people? And the third question was just around something you just said, which was around tensions. Have there been tensions? It's not. It's a not a nice question. It's more. Have there been tensions, and how have they been negotiated? And what's what's been the topics of these tensions, basically? Your last question was about tensions. How do we solve this, discuss well, this, how well, do we address actually, them? It was more like what have they been about, basically? What what have the tensions been? Assuming that you mentioned one this Friday, but I'm wondering, yeah, have there been tensions and what have, what's what been the topic of the, of or the main concern? I'll ask um, mine I'm later. Sorry first about the transformation. Yeah. I'll ask later. I'll, I'll yeah, <laughs> it's already three questions. So um, it's not that we receive a bunch of money at the beginning of the, of the month and then nothing else. Um, we have a lot of artists in the group and they receive uh, their money when the theater pays. So uh, it's very usual, really it, it happens often that in the middle of the month we are, below, we, we are close to zero and then on the Telegram platform we ask are there still fees coming in? And usually they are. So it, we used to be close to be zero, but we also used to go up very, very easily. Um, and then... Um, the transformations. The transformations. Um, yeah, for the transformation, I think uh, because I arrived later and so the process was already on and so I could really explore and analyze from a, an already, go, already going on project. Um, I think for me, uh, my life completely changed. I can give a very practical example. Um, before I had the feeling I, ha I had all kind of illnesses growing in my body and now they disappeared. So um, <laughs> um, I think it really, the transformation is very, very deep, very progressive. I think first you go through the anxiety of um, feeling insecure with the not knowing. 
and then slowly you you feel the the presence of everyone like the first time i entered my card in the machine uh, to buy to buy an orange we were 10 buying this orange so you really feel uh, protected secured uh, and also, since I joined the Common Wallet, I had uh, professional doubts um, at, at the moment when I joined. And now I'm solving them, but it has been a process where I wasn't bringing a lot of money, I didn't know what to do, um, I didn't know how my professional life would be orientated, and the, and the Common Wallet allowed me and uh, legitimated this kind of research. So um, this is a, a very deep transformation that couldn't happen if the common wallet wouldn't have been there for me. Um, I, yeah, maybe I let the others continue. Yeah, I think for me it's quite similar because when I, <coughs> uh, when when common wallet was still discussing what it would become, uh, Christoph uh, came to talk to me about it. And I had just quit my job and inscribed myself for a two year study in a different country without any source of income on the horizon. Um, so it was a very um, anxiety inducing, uh, but necessary moment. And uh, when he came to talk to me, I said, but you will not want me because I will bring poverty <laughs> into the common wallet. And then I also thought that he just wanted me to be the financial manager of it because I used to be a, a, a financial manager of a structure. And, um, and then he said, look, no, no, we would love to have you there. And I was like, weird. Um, but I said, yes, of course, I have nothing to lose. I have zero euros and I'm going to Amsterdam. Like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, and it was great because, um, uh, yeah, I could spend these years studying. Of course, I also worked uh, alongside the study and brought in some money. But I really did not feel as much pressure as I would have felt otherwise. And I also felt very supported by the common wallet, not guilted or shamed or pushed, but very like enthusiastically supported. And, and it made me feel... Yeah, it made me feel like money was not something to worry about. I had already a thousand things to worry about, but money was not that to the extent that I thought it would be. Uh, I thought I would really be worrying a lot about money, but in the end, I, thanks to Common Wallet, I wasn't. And I also stopped using my credit card. I had this really nasty habit of like using my credit card at the end of the month, like already for years, and. I completely, this completely disappeared. I haven't used my credit card in, I think in two years. And yeah, I don't know why, I can't explain it, but it's, uh, yeah, it changes the very practical relationship, but also, yeah, it made things possible in my life in a much better way than I thought it would. With, uh, uh, sorry, Adva, just with uh, an eye on the time, I just wanted to remind you the question was about the detentions, but maybe this is exactly what you were going uh, to do, if you want to take that up. And uh, <laughs> then later there was already another question from the audience, but of course, just know that we are approaching already the end. You might contradict me, but um, there are no tensions <laughs> <laughs> because of the commitment uh, for transparency. So disagreement is not um, uh, a cause of tension. It's actually um, something that generates um, interest and that generates um, I'm afraid of this word, but it, for the lack of another one, <laughs> it generates personal growth um, because you welcome those uh, disagreements and you welcome those frustrations and, um, and you work on yourself um, not to judge and also not to be afraid of judgment, as I mentioned before. 
So I think as long as this is being practiced, there is no tension being generated, but some kind of a celebration of those different opinions and um, um, and then a frustration becomes actually um, uh, a shared um, problem or a shared um, interest to tackle. Um, so yeah, I really think uh, that this is something that is very um, kind of typical to uh, to the common wallet in my personal experience. Um, there are no, I mean, the friendship between us really only grew since then, since we started. Uh, the love grew and, uh, and tensions are actually on the surface, not really there. Under the surface for people's personal experiences, again, I cannot talk for others. Um, but debates are not, um, or uh, disagreements are definitely not uh, generating tension. Um. <coughs> I, I agree Maybe no af mentions. after, when we have uh, you know unlimited time in the bar, we mm -hmm. can give you more examples of how it contributed to our personal well-beings. But we can do it later, so maybe. Absolutely. That would be great. Uh, um, I, I just have a question, just going back to something that you mentioned at the beginning of the talk about this being a practice of research. Uh, and is this practice of research, I guess, you said that this specific project that you're working on is not a systemic one, but maybe is the research contributing maybe towards a systemic conversation? Um, what is that? How do you feel about c c communism, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> just saying, I mean, I don't know, just, just, just as a hypothesis to throw out there. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and, and I... <laughs> I guess um, I guess <laughs> it's a legitimate question. Um, <laughs> and I guess, I don't know, a lot of the work that, that, that um, a lot of the thinking that, that I think about in my own time is, is about sort of disjoining love from money, disjoining work from love. And it seems like you're actually trying to bring those two things closer to each other. And this scares me a lot. So I, I, I was just wondering whether you could speak to that a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, to talk about c communism, um, it's, uh, it's really not about communism. Uh, like I said, it's not about making things the same, but about using our differences to generate solidarity for, with and for each other and making things possible with and for each other, which is something else, I think. Um, and in terms of love and work and money, I think what Common Wallet has done for me, uh, and this is personal maybe, but I think it is shared at least with some, is it has shown me that money Yes, it is a real entity that makes life possible or impossible if you lack it, but it is very, very much for people who are in this mid-scale of things are just about kind of possible. It is very much an emotional entity. And it has a huge emotional and psychological impact. And, and this... Um, and what kind of emotional entity it is, I did not decide. I inherited that. I inherited that from my parents, who are the children of people who grew up in war, who worked in factories, um, who did not get the chance to work, uh, who then bred a, a generation who had to study, and who then bred a generation who had to become lawyers and doctors and all of those things. So I did not choose my emotional, what the emotional worth of money in my life. I inherited it by a personal lineage, by a cultural lineage, by a cultural national situation that I grew up in and that history, uh, and by a, a larger culture of capitalism that I also did not choose. And what Common Wallet offers me is that true, um, this conversation 
through committing to trust, which is often not mentioned in the same sentence with money, often it's more mistrust or distrust, but through working with trust and actively engaging myself to trust, um, the emotional relationship with money has completely changed. Um, and I think this is the systemic potential of it. How to make that grow is a different question. I think this is a way, being here, sharing this, uh, um, is a way to make that uh, experience grow and share it. Uh, but for me, this is where the systemic impact of it can be. Not as an economic model, but as a collective transformation of our relationship. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to answer. Um. I don't know enough about communism to answer, I think, but um, if this can add something to your question, uh, we try to preserve our lifestyle uh, based on our needs and desires um, uh, rather than contribute to a system. The system is the uh, respect to the needs. Um, and the respect to the needs become indeed, as Ingrid said, affective. So I think it's, it's about the transformation of money into trust into transparency, into inner value, uh, more than the system. The system is actually, there are no rules because the need is ruling, in fact. Does this answer your question? Can Maybe I add something short? Yes, yes go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, um, what um, what may be like the difference, the main difference between the kind of communism that we try to practice and the, and communism, is that uh, we make sure not to create a system that uh, somehow um, imposes things on the individual. Um, so we never say we would never say no to anything, but we would rather ask how. Um, so. Anything that happens in the common wallet is somehow um, induced by the uh, specific and personal desires of the specific group of people that is there. And it's not some kind of a top-down or overall system that decides for us what we can or cannot desire. Um, yeah. and, I, and another thing is that I think what we work on is um, uh, some kind of... Um, like, like to recognize um, the benefits of dependency. So rather than a, a clo being close to communism, I think we are just more in communication with um, the kind of, I don't know what to call it, neoliberal, neo-capitalist uh, logic that um, um, the best way to survive um, is uh, to actually be independent, so to create no um, dependency on others to help you make a living, to help you um, um, yeah, fulfill your desires. And we want to say no to that. We want to say, no, let's, let's be dependent on each other because it can actually um, create possibilities that, do, that don't exist when we actually each taking care of ourselves and our own independence. Thank you. A very quick question. Um, how, how do you do your tax declaration, like together or individually, and do you pay an accountant? <laughs> how do you do your tax declaration? And then, uh, yes, taxes. And and if you have an accountant or somebody um, professional. And if you have an accountant. So there is no legal framework uh, for a common wallet in Belgium. So our tax declarations are individual. Um, and uh, and also for those who are employees, they will get their pay slips on their name, so there is no problem there. For those of us who are self-employed, we have a professional bank account, and then the money goes from there onto the common wallet account. Um, so those things are still separate because there is just no legal framework for it to be otherwise. 
I have, have a question. many questions, but not so much time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we can collect. I don't know. Maybe we can collect. Uh, thank you. Um, I have a question regarding um, how um, this logic um, or the way the uh, common wallet works is influencing other fields of your uh, life. If it produces other economies, for example, you are all uh, more or less in the same um, working environment. Does it influence the way you choose with whom to work? Do you offer uh, jobs to your colleagues, which would make sense to repopulate the <laughs> bank account, for example, and, and uh, this kind of logic, like if some of you is uh, uh, looking for, for an apartment, does, uh, does it look first in the properties of the other um, members or things like this, like how this economy produces other economies of living, um, uh, working, and um, yeah, how it affects relations, uh, yeah. No, I don't have the feeling um, it produces something particular. I, I think it stays very individual. Of course, it creates uh, a closer relationship, and then we get to know each other more, more, more. And so maybe we're more inclined to work with the people you see regularly week, you know, on a week, weekly basis. Um, what changes for the payments, for instance, is that... Um, we, we allow ourselves to insist that the payment comes on time uh, from the theaters because we usually uh, receive that from the art field. Um, th something that wouldn't happen on an individual basis. But here it's the common wallet, it's not only uh, our individual money, it's our money. So we don't want the group to pay the price of a delayed payment. Um, yeah, someone wants to add something? Um, yeah, I think um, that uh, this question tackled uh, quite an interesting ethical question that we are dealing with. Um, indeed, um, some of us are in positions where we can create opportunities, uh, financial opportunities for others. And um, if we do that, what does it mean that we are taking care of our own wallet and our own income? I mean, I can give a very specific example. Um, I, um, I teach in, a, in an art academy and we were looking for um, external jury members uh, last year. And um, uh, I, it was my responsibility to make a list of, uh, of people. And um, if I wouldn't be in the common wallet, uh, my first priority content-wise and kind of quality-wise would be Ingrid. Um, but uh, she had to go down to be third in the list because I felt so uncomfortable with uh, inviting her because, yeah, what does it mean and how do I also defend it to the students and, uh, and to myself? Uh, these things get very confused and, um, and they are very confusing. Um, and I think, uh, I, I think there we are very clear about the fact that there is no right or wrong uh, as long as we are honest to ourselves and that we know that if we choose to create financial opportunity and of course it's not only financial it's also professional and con content uh, and and happiness opportunity for someone from um, the common wallet it's uh, because um, uh, not because we want uh, the money that they earn with it to enter the account, but because we would have done it anyhow. So it's actually, the only way to deal with it is to really just ask ourselves this honest question and to, and to act upon our own ethics with it. Um, yeah, but it will remain forever uh, an issue. Yeah. What is nice though is doing this as a way of generating new income that would have never existed without the common wallet. So yeah. you can always invite us. <laughs>
I think we have time uh, for our last question. I, um, I have one two, there. but they're quick. Um, one of them is, how does a new member get added? Who decides and or is the group closed? Um, and then the second one is, how do you make the system that you have generated between you fit the bank system? So is there such a thing as a collective account? Are you a company? Like, how does that work? I can maybe quickly answer the technical part and then you can talk about the more fun stuff. So in Belgium, something exists like a, a feitelijke vereniging, a factual union. And it is, um, it is a kind of company that has no legal status. So it's not a legal personhood. It is just a, a, a factual union, like if you would live together with your partner, but you're not married or not officially recognized, then you would open a bank account together. It's basically the same procedure. So we have a common bank account that is called Common Wallet FV, and that is our factual union that has no legal value whatsoever. Yes, we all have to sign, and if we need to get a new card, it's multiple people have to sign for this. Uh, about the new member, uh, we had a new member six months ago. Um, myself, I joined the Common Wallet just because I had a drink with Adva and what I said about my life uh, made her say, why don't you join the Common Wallet? So it's a kind of a momentum uh, decision. Of course, I knew about the Common Wallet before, so I, I was aware of, of already about the values and all. But um, for instance, the new, the new member now, um, didn't came because of any criteria, except one is that we wanted someone outside of the art field to join the, the group, because we wanted to, yeah, to to, yeah, to disturb a little bit the project and see uh, what it could bring. Um, so this is one thing, and um, there was a, a second question, which I had an idea, but I forgot the question. Oh, it was a practical, it was a practical question, like uh, she answered it already. Okay, oh, I'm frustrated. I had something to say and I forgot. <laughs> okay, it will come back. How would you join? What is the procedure for someone to join? Who's um, yeah, so... Um, I think it has to be an evidence. For, uh, it has to be an evidence for the person uh, first. Um, she needs to engage with the um, with the. She needs to engage with trust. Uh, she also needs to agree to to have the to go into this deep process we were talking about. Uh, to to put to put herself at risk. Uh, to revisit her life uh, value uh, and to flow with the, with the common values. So this is a big step and not everyone is, um, is open to this. So I think this is the main um, criteria. Uh, I'm still looking for the other If thing. the group is closed. If the group is closed and then we also close. No, but the, the, uh, you can answer the question whether the group is closed. This was uh, the last part. Maybe it goes back to um, there would never be a no. There would be a how. Um, so if there is a wish of someone to join, in principle, yes. But then we need to find out together with this person how to make it possible. Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for being here. Uh, for those who are here, we can continue the conversation at the bar. For uh, those who followed online, thank you also for being here. And thank you Ingrid, Tiziana and Adva and good night. <laughs>